Hey guys, we're gonna go into a uh, kind of off topic from boxing tonight and we're gonna talk about a little bit of the Bible. I won't have scripture here. Uh, we always want people to read scripture on their own for the most part. And again, it takes practice to build those type of muscles. If I am to do any kind of sermon, I'm gonna have to like really uh, just practice at it and make sure I have my verses down and everything else before I do this stuff. But I just wanna have like a casual conversation, you know? But the state of this country, again, it's nothing new. We've seen it in plenty of places and this same evil that is consuming our country, you understand? Uh, it, it even happened to Israel, guys. And the same things that happened to Israel, the same things that are happening to this country. Uh, this country is compromised. I'm telling you that right now, the leadership's compromised. Again, uh, this country, I'll give you an example. In the rest of the world, unlike the United States, we have the highest rate of children who are growing up without a father figure in the household. You have this stuff where people are kind of cohabitating and things like that. But in America, this stuff is the most prevalent. You understand? The rest of the countries, you can say whatever you want, you know, they even understand the importance of male leadership and what males bring to a society, you know? But America has the highest rate of females in leadership. More women attend church. More women are in the workforce, especially when it goes from a demographic of like 25 to like 50 something years old. You understand this is the highest rate that men have not worked in this, co this country's ever seen. These men don't want to work. You understand? And there is a reason for this. We'll go back to, I think it's 2 Kings. I think it's 2 Kings and it's the start of chapter one when it introduces Solomon. But Solomon, he did ask our Lord for wisdom and he did receive re uh, wisdom. He built the Lord's temple and everything else. Solomon was, you know, he was one of the Lord's anointed, but he did have an issue and he was warned early on. Don't, don't do this or your heart's going to turn away from me. David didn't have that problem, guys. David was always seeking the Lord. But Solomon, he ended up with 700 wives, 300 concubines. And, you know, I'm sure when it first started, this stuff's not written in the Bible, but you can foresee how this stuff happens. But one of them, you know, hey, can I just build this small little altar here? You know what I'm saying? So I can worship, you know, the gods of my, my, my homeland or whatever else. And, you know, it started with one. Then it even gets to the point where I believe that a Moloch thing was built up where they were sacrificing children. So this is where Israel goes through a huge problem where just like this country, more pagan religions and these false gods are infiltrating the country. And there are spirits behind these gods, guys. These things are set in place and you can tell that they're very carnal. They're not nothing to do with the spirit, you understand? Very carnal, very sensual. It's always to the feelings and to emotions. These are how these pagan religions try to get to you guys. If it's telling you that, you know, it's it's geared towards your feelings and emotions and emotional highs and all that type of stuff you should not trust that religion guys again if it's carnal and if it's not spiritual and it permits everything and it tells you there's nothing wrong with this or whatever you know there's something offbeat about that but this country that's what we're falling under right now when you read books like Hosea it talks about the spirit of whoredom harlotry you understand it's the same thing what was first established by God and when we were obeying more of God's commands creeds statues and things like that this country flourished guys we did not have the issues that we have today there wasn't these mass shootings there wasn't all this violence there wasn't this craziness going on it's just as simple as that in the schoolhouse You even had capital punishment in the schoolhouse and it did not drive these kids to go out and go shoot people. 
But you see that this country is kind of tearing itself apart right now, guys. And you see, such as Apple, we'll use them for example. I just call it goddess worship. But it's always been the same type of deities, where it's Astaroth, Ishtar, it's all the same. But now they're pushing this Mother Gaia. And she's very concerned about the well-being of planet Earth, and we got to clean it and go to convert to clean energy and things like that. Uh, we can use windmills and things. Dude, guys. This country is doing a lot to offend our Lord. I'm just telling you. If you want to cleanse the planet and everything else, read the Bible, and you'll see how to do that. It'll give you clear-cut instructions how to do that, guys. Clean energy is not going to do it. Windmills are not going to do it. When you read 1 Kings and you read about Elijah and King Ahab, they're worshippers of Baal. And he was supposed to be a storm god, although we all know who he is. <laughs> Elijah told him, I'm going to pray that it doesn't rain. And it was that way for like three and a half years. And it wasn't until what partook on Mount Carmel when God finally allowed it to rain again on their lands. But they went through drought and everything else. And here we are trying to raise up another fake deity. Mother Gaia, whatever her name is. And acting like it's a funny joke. It's There's nothing funny about it at all, guys. You guys are going to bring more evil onto these lands. You're going to pollute your own land. I'm just trying to tell you. This has always occurred when you're not doing right by God. The one true God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If we don't repair our relationship with him, this stuff is just going to get worse. It's that simple, guys. It's very simple. When you read the book of Jonah... Nineveh, which is basically in Babylon. They were sacrificing children to Moloch. These little statues, or whatever you want to call them, where this thing raises its hands and you put the baby in it and it throws the babies in the furnace, guys. Even God was merciful to them when he sent Jonah and told them to repent, guys. If America, if these leaders had the nerve to actually repent, you wouldn't have to go out of your way to create all this nonsense and madness. Mother gayhood, uh, feminism, and all this other crap. It's just goddess worship. And religions such as Catholicism are part of this nonsense as well. They put the crown on Mary. And she's holding up Jesus, but she's the, the superior in the picture. That's not Mary and that's not Jesus. If you read up even further and you read about Nimrod, and I think his wife was named Sarah Ramis or something like that, but he dies, and then she claims that she's a new virgin and that she's pregnant with a son. So then they made her a deity. When you see that type of stuff, that type of goddess worship, that's where you're seeing its origins come from if you guys do your research. This stuff is nothing new under the sun, guys. And I'm telling you, Nineveh, they were smart, although they were eventually destroyed later because they went back to their to their ways. You understand? But if we humble ourselves, just like Nineveh, because right now we're kind of in that precursor state. We're at the point where it's not really precursor state. Like they're doing all this stuff in plain sight. We're like right on the cusp where we're basically on the level of Sodom and Gomorrah, Nineveh and places like that, where our Lord just had to straight out eradicate. But even with Nineveh, God sent Jonah and he told him, you repent, put yourselves in sackcloth, fast, everything in the city, every beast, woman, man, child, the Lord will relent and he will save you. Jonah got mad because he wanted him to be destroyed. That's one of my favorite books in the Bible. If America did the same thing, 
if we took down all these dumb little idols that we're starting to put up, you look at that statue in the courthouse in New York. That thing looks like it's from a Marvel movie, guys. Take down the Statue of Liberty. Take down all these idols, guys. All this wokeism crap, this rainbow stuff. If we repent from our ways, I promise you, God would relent. He would have mercy. What these people are doing, it's not new, guys. It's not. But we're reaching a critical state right now. These idiots are going even further with deception. They're showing you little paper mache fake aliens. I don't know what they're trying to use the aliens for, guys. But they've already been proven to lie about things such as COVID. And they were exposed to other stuff, guys. And now they want you to believe that there's aliens. You need to start asking yourself why now is all this alien crap coming out. What are they trying to accomplish here? But I'm telling you right now, if our leadership would cut this stuff out, take all this crap out of the schools, reintroduce God, I'm trying to tell you, this country would be blessed. You would see this inflation go down, things start to normalize. If they got rid of their perverse equity that they're pushing everywhere, Department of Education, Department of Justice, they're telling you that this is just what they're doing. When we all know it's perverted, it doesn't work. We know what they're trying to push is not profitable, just like when we read Jeremiah, guys. If they relent from this stuff wholeheartedly and genuinely, I'm telling you right now, our Lord God would be pleased and he would start taking away this evil that he's allowed to be unleashed on this country. Goddess worship again was also in Israel. When you read the books, Jeremiah mentions it briefly when he tries to save a remnant from going to Egypt. These are followers of the goddess of heaven. You're starting to see these churches pop up where they call God she and all this other nonsense. And these are the same people pushing non-binary, whatever other nonsense that they're pushing. In Ezekiel, you see it there as well, the abominations that these people are doing. In this country, it's no different. And again, none of it is new. The Lord God is not gonna lose, guys. Again, I don't know. Well, basically, they're in reprobate mindset, guys. And you're seeing this type of idiocy. We're in a digital age where you have all information at your fingertips, guys. People are still too lazy to do research and go look these things up on their own. They will believe anything today. They don't even have to work hard. And like I said, they're doing this stuff in plain sight now. I'm watching uh, Fox News and this one of the founders of the Satanist guys that they're now starting to allow uh, to, to take, you know, partake in public schools, after school programs. One of their talking points, again, this always points to carnality, trying to sway people with fleshly desires and things like that. But he's like, I feel sorry for the Christians. The heaven I get to go to, we get to have sex. Straight lie out of hell, guys. From all the things that you can take from hell, you're not gonna have company there at all, to be quite honest. It's gonna be one of the most loneliest, desolate places. And while you're there, you're gonna realize whatever you sold your soul for was definitely not worth it. And you're, that's when you're finally gonna be calling out to God. And that's when you're finally gonna understand just how big you messed up. There was a king, I think his name was Manasseh. Manasseh was very evil. A lot of you know Isaiah. Isaiah was his grandfather. His father was Hezekiah. Hezekiah was one of the good kings. <laughs> you know, he was like one out of like all of them that was actually good. He had his long pro prolonged by 15 years. That Hezekiah. God was going to kill him. And it's crazy how God works and it shows you his sovereignty. 
I always am amazed when I read these, you know, read the Bible. It's just insane, especially when you start digging into the history and everything else behind it. Plus, there's like archaeological evidence that Hezekiah and Manasseh existed, uh, by the way. But this man not only saw, well, listen, let's go back to Hezekiah. Hezekiah got his life prolonged by 15 years. He was a good man. Bible says he was the better than all the kings before him and after him. And it's so crazy. God was going to kill him, but he prayed and God was like, okay, gave him 15 more years. Turns out the son, I believe his mother, I forgot her name. It's like Zadora or something like that. But she was the granddaughter or daughter of Isaiah. And Isaiah is a very prolific book. Just FYI to some of you guys. It shows you clear evidence that they knew the coming of Jesus Christ. And those who follow the Talmud, they of course ban it and they claim that you're going to be cursed if you read these verses. You know what I'm saying? That point to Jesus Christ. But his son Manasseh ends up becoming king when he's like 12 years old and he's evil. Basically a, a Satanist has Baal worship. He even sacrificed his own son into the fires of Moloch. His own son, guys. Sawed his father or grandfather Isaiah in half. Everything that Hezekiah, Hezekiah took out all the idols and everything out of Judah. He was a southern king. The, the north kings, they were, of course, evil, you know. The most evil north king was Ahab, which again married Jezebel. But Hezekiah, he removed all the idols from Israel. So you could kind of see why God was like, okay, you know, even though I know your son's going to be one of the most evil kings ever, you know, I'll let you live another 15 years. And again, it just points to the sovereignty of Lord, of our God. And this kid is over here, like I said, sacrificed his own son. Sawed his grandfather in half. <laughs> you know how much discomfort and just sorrow and shame I'm sure he gave to his mother. Who again, I can't remember if she was the, the daughter or granddaughter of Isaiah, the prophet. But because the Lord went to him many times to try to get him to repent, he finally hit him with the bridle, the bit and bridle. Okay, you don't want to listen, I'll give you pain. Uses the Assyrians to capture this guy. They hook him by his nose and whatever other. They tortured him and everything else. And this is when he finally realizes the evil that he's done. And he repents, guys. And he starts to undo the things that he did. The idols that he re-erected that his father took down, he took them back down. And what was meant for evil ended up being for good, ultimately even from one of the most evil kind of people that ever walked on this earth. Now, when you guys are approaching the Apocrypha, you're, you're walking on dangerous territory. But if I were you guys, again, understand, it's not included in the Bible for the reason, because you can spot the fake. When you read the prayer of Manasseh, when you pray to God and ask for repentance and came to understand his evil ways. But it's one of the most beautiful things that I've ever read. The part where it says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did no sin, that's where you could tell that, you know, it was written like in the like in the second century or something like that. That's where the person, the pseudo-author, screwed up because the bible tells us that we all fall short all have sinned you understand there's only one that was here that was blameless that's the lord jesus christ and that's why this thing's not included in the inspired scripture of god but if the leadership could take up after manasseh and repent even after all this evil you guys have done we're talking about one of the most evil vile wicked people to ever walk this earth guys Sacrifice his own son to Moloch. I'm trying to tell you, God's mercy is abundant, guys. It is abundant.
He is no respecter of persons, guys. If you guys relent from this evil, I'm telling you, we can be saved from it. If you want to continue, I'm telling you, it's just going to get worse. It's just crazy. I don't understand what these people are doing in this country, man. But it is not profitable. It is not causing this country to thrive. We are losing our standing as a predominant world power, guys. America is defeating itself. These other countries, all they have to do is just wait and let us destroy ourselves. It's going to be easy for them if we continue this nonsense. And I'm telling you as well, our leadership is compromised. I'm telling you. Other than the spiritual, of course, they're being influenced by evil spirits and entities and things like that. I know this, <laughs> this video is just off the wall to a lot of you, but I'm telling you guys, this stuff is real. But there are outside influence that are causing our leadership to do this to their own people. It could be for any kinds of reasons. Maybe they got dirt on them or whatever else, but they're doing this stuff intentionally, guys, to the people of this country. And the same thing happened with Israel. The people that they thought they were allies with and doing business with, those countries ended up gathering together <laughs> and kicked Israel's butt, and the Lord allowed it. If he's even willing to do that to his own chosen people, I'm telling you, America better humble itself quickly, guys. I know I'm going to catch some stuff for this uh, video, but again, I'm just, again, going to plead to you guys, start reading the Bible, start considering your relationship with our Lord, and <sighs> again, Manasseh was a very evil person, you know, and we all know about the thief who got saved in the 11th hour that was right next to our Lord when he was crucified. So again, I'm not the person who dishes out, <laughs> you know, the forgiving or sins and what we need to do or what instructions. The Lord God will do whatever he pleases because he is God. But he sent all the prophets to tell people to repent and turn from their ways. And I'm just telling you right now, guys, if you are going to do it, if you're going to try to stop your sin, your fornication, your adultery, your carnal lusts living deliciously if you're into drugs and all that type of stuff i know there's nothing beyond what god can save manasseh is proof of that guys and this goes for the leadership too in this country and around the world this is what makes the god of abraham isaac and jacob great he's the only god of salvation these other gods again they're just part of the enemy i don't care if it's buddhism i don't care if it's muslim with its fake jesus christ I don't care if it's Buddha. I don't care if it's Brahma. It's all Satan, guys. There's only one God. There's only one rock. If we don't relent and turn back to him, I'm telling you, it's going to get a lot more crazier. And again, th guys, they don't even care about masking what they're doing. They do this stuff in plain sight. Again. It's to that level. But guys, get in your Bible. Start learning about your Lord. Start opening yourself to him. Him better than me can give you all the information, insight, and wisdom, and everything that you need, guys. You have problems. Again, I don't care if you're a murderer. I don't care if you're trans. You understand? Turn to the Lord. He will build your faith. He will convict you. It will hurt. If he doesn't chasten you, that's when you should be afraid. Hell is real, guys, and these things are real. We'll maybe get in more into that aspect of it, although a lot of Christian channels, they always focus on demons and things like that. I try not to focus on that stuff. I really don't. But I'm telling you, they're real, guys. Perhaps... In the future, we will get into that when I'm ready to disclose that type of stuff. But I'm telling you, if you have your sights set on God, you don't need to worry about the demons and all them. 
the evil spirits and all that crap, but you will face tribulation. I'll tell you that it sucks. The Lord is going to chasten you when you do confess. God is not mocked. We do reap what we sow. But I'm telling you, even Manasseh was used. What was meant for evil turned to good, guys. This is how our Lord works. Through God, all things are possible. It's just as simple as that, guys. I hope this touches some of you. <laughs> oh, man, guys. Uh, it's easier to talk boxing, guys, again. And whenever I do come out with these, like, Christian videos, that's when, like, more bad stuff happens to me. But that's all right. We're going to keep pushing through it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like I said, maybe we'll get into the, you know, the enemy. But put your focus on God, guys, again. And just deal with it. Drink your cup, okay? You are going to go through persecution and things like that. It's going to suck, guys. When I was being chastened by the Lord, let me tell you, I might as well in my mind thought I was already in hell so but he saved me he delivered me I should be dead but I'm still here talking to you guys all right we will talk to you guys later <laughs> bye